So, welcome again and uh, we ended at TMS and uh, TMS actually stands for transcranial magnetic stimulation, transcranial you put a magnetic field and um, stimulate a certain area, give a certain task and look at it. So, these are correlational studies. Now, MEG has requires a lot of machinery and all, it is slightly costly investigation. EEG have boiled down to almost portable machines. Now, this is what you are looking at the activity, the functionality. The two most popular investigation are positron emission tomography and functional MRI which provide the indirect measure of metabolic activity. Metabolic metabolism as you understand you must be aware it is the process of uh, formation and repair and consumption of energy all to run your bodily system. It is very expensive and, but there is a physics principle that you inject the person with the radioactive tracer and as the radioactive tracer decays as, as it is normally it is a glucose uh, based uh, radioactive tracer and as the glucose is, is utilized there is a the electrons release and then the, these two gamma waves are created which are caught by the scanner and that depending on the area where this whole thing is used gives you these type of images. Now, but remember we do not know what is happening in the resting brain, you can do a pet of the resting brain, pet is also used for tumors because tumors tend to pick up more glucose and release all this, uh, uh, this these uh, emitting waves and so you have to give a task, so already you give a task you have already injected. So, the task is being done in certain areas of brain and those areas of brain become active and that this is what you see. You see a pet image of when you speak words that is a Broca's area. So, if you remember I talked about Gal who was talking about bumps here and bumps here and brain. So, it is reconfirming all that ok certain areas of brain. So, when you are hearing words this is the area of brain temporal loop which gets active. When you are seeing words, this is what becomes active, the whole vision. When you are thinking about words, it is again the frontal loop. So, you can you can see actually if you look at it, these are the pet images, but then pet is very very slow to act. You have to give a task, record all this, it is a matter of minutes. And remember when I showed you the scale, the activity is happening in milliseconds. So, this discrepancy, so what took over, so even before MRI, there was plain MRI and CT scan, they are simplest investigation. CT scan and MRI are simple, you MRI has a basic principle magnetic resonance imagery, you know all about that. Briefly, you put the person in the scanner, there is a magnetic field and that magnetic field orients the water molecules and into a certain magnetic field you send a pulse which disorient them on the way back to release uh, the, this thing and this whole imagery is comes up. The improvement, so but that did not help us that told us about the illnesses. CT scan is again attenuated x-ray, functional MRI creates a very detailed anatomical pictures provided by MRI when there is a task that has been given and the blood flow changes. So, what we are looking at PET which is very costly because of the radioactive tracer and all that. What we do here, we put the person in magnet, magnetic field, give a task and what we, so this is the basis as I told you, protons in water, they have a random magnetic spin they once you put in a field they all will orient 
when a radio frequency pulse is provided the proton spin changes it again goes back to the same and that this is the electromagnetic signal while in relaxation it sends and this you pick up by the donut of detectors. So, this is called blood based activity it is called bold blood oxygen level dependent activity. This is assumed that if you give a demand to the brain of a certain area and we assume that fine we want to see which area of brain does mathematics. You think the MRI will tell you? No, because you cannot put a whole MRI into the whole length of the brain. These all take slice by slice, resolution you can change, but then you have to have what you call ROI, this is called region of interest. So, you have to think okay, my, I want somebody to read and I think frontal lobe is the place where the brain activity will increase. So, we give a task which is appropriate to what psychological definition which we have used, give the task blood oxygen level as it see normally in a normal situation deoxygenated hemoglobin is more, but as the work increases a demand on uh, increases then the oxygenation also increases because they need more oxygen cells need more oxygen to work and that oxygen changes the whole magnetic thing because deoxygenated blood has different type of magnetic thing and oxygenated has a different type of stuff. So, they both rely on what is called subtraction method there is a certain activity which is going on you increase the demand and that increases the blood flow but that you have to separate from the baseline activity which is going. So, you have to subtract that imagery from that baseline thing. So, th this is a just an example a stimulation activity con minus control activity gives you difference activity. So, this is what I was saying the brain is a very very dynamic thing. How do you know which brain activity corresponds? So, you have a region of interest and you expect to see changes if you do not find you go to another region of interest. Okay. Now, we will talk about consciousness and so this is like this visible visible words which we are seeing consciously mass word. So, fMRI not PET actually fMRI is the in thing in research all over the world. In fact, in the last uh, 15 uh, it actually came in US maybe 20 years back but the huge data on brain, but the there are problems and let me address those problems before we really jump on to other things. What is a resting brain? So, the problem is resting brain is not silent brain, so you really do not know what is happening at that. So, what is the resting at stage taken you ask a person to rest again that is a psychological thing where the person is not doing any activity he is not doing that task at least which he was which we are going to give but then we give that task and we assume from that baseline okay now if you see this this is the type of left and right resting activity which you see but the brain all these color things are active so we don't know what are they doing here because the person may not be doing the task which you are going to give him, he may be doing it something else. Now, to correlate all that complex operational thing which are going on in the brain and I have I showed you a slide in the beginning, I said you do not think about monkeys. So, you will start thinking about monkeys. So, somebody may be remembering a mother, somebody may be bothered about the job or some paper or some mathematics, how can you differentiate? Now, you can tell the person ok, you are not going to think about your family, I am sure the mind will keep pushing the images. So, that type of control is very difficult ok. The other thing which was lesion I told you brain injuries, you cannot create injuries to study the deficit, this was the old method. 
brokers, verniques, aphasia, where there is a problem in comprehending speech and all. This is a big problem of all the mechanisms which we have to do research with brain. What are we trying to are do? Are we interested in the space? In the see, we exist in space time. Is there any doubt about it? This whole space time, which is the fourth the dimension, which uh, we exist in that. Our minds actually work that way. If you and they're so entwined. And that is why when the visual signal comes, it differentiates into what and where, that is space and time. And let me give you an example. The example is, if I ask you to close your eyes and walk for a minute, and after that I ask you how many feet you have gone, you will be roughly be able to tell me, if you are averagely educated person. Or if I ask you to walk 10 feet and tell me how many minutes you have walked, you will be able to do that. This space time in the temporoparietal thing is entwined. What, how do we investigate? Are we interested in spatial? Yes, we are interested in spatial, especially to look for the neurological illnesses, tumors, interested in which area of brain does what, which may have help us in developing or are we interested when does it happen? So, the best combination which has emerged, which is emerging due to a lot of technological limitations of field and noise and all that is fMRI plus EEG. Simultaneously people have tried, but there are a lot of technological issues because the noise of the magnetic field will alter EEG and EEG's thing will alter. So, plus you have to fMRI go slide by slide. So, you have to move the EEG machine also. So, those I am sure it will be sorted out someday or maybe something else will come up. So, these are type of things which you, okay, this is a CT scan, simplest of investigation. Again, this is a type of MRI images. This is what I showed you DTI in the beginning, fibers traveling from occipital cortex, this is how you a DTI appears, diffuse tensor imaging. Okay. So, just to wrap up this and uh, this, if you look at the whole thing that there is a continuous complex activity going on in the brain and the brain has to really keep integrating and differentiating the whole uh, information input. Uh, and then we have limited tools to access the whole dilemma between where and when and whether this something called brain at rest is uh, so there are questions which arise out of this brain also has lot of other things uh, when you look at when we are talking about specialization you have heard of a debate of right and left brain. So, it is it's just not that it is just specialized. Plus, all these areas which are specialized are not the only centers which are doing that. There are a lot of associative areas. So, when we talk of network, I will mention you the, the whole as business of association in the brain is the trick. So, you heard of left brain is more rational, analytical, planning, interface with the world and right is more intuitive, artistic, there is some truth in it, not full truth. But brain also, can you see this? So, brain has lot of processes which are going on, which may not be aware, but brain also has lot of, so does brain decide what it wants to do? This is a question of will. And what is the bottleneck? When there are so many stimulus which are going on in the brain at the same time, but still by experience if you look at it, you are able to look at one thing at one time and maybe something else at a different time. How? There is something called attention. Attention seems to be the bottleneck of the brain and that is, you look at it, do not read it. 
just look at it. What can you see? For an average radiologist, you will see an X-ray. But if you look at it, you can find maybe some people look at it a huge gorilla, 800 pound gorilla sitting like this. You see this image between the checks. Can you see a face? Now, your brain is able to differentiate this. That means, the brain is tricky in the sense and the trick of the brain is that even if you give partial information to the brain, the brain will use its own maps and memories and make a composite image out of it. Why? Because brain does not want any uncertainty and that too why? Because to be certain of whether the external thing is a threatful situation or the external situation is a pleasurable situation. So, you, it uses this mechanism of gestalt. Brain also at the all the time it keeps comparing the, the inner thoughts, the inner images that determines your action and as I said, emotions, they are positive emotions that we always hear in the self-help books, but these emotions are the one which sometimes determine your attention level. There may be 10 things happening in front of you and there is a fire which is just behind your feet. Your brain will always it will not ask you, it will turn your attention to that fire, if your brain circuitry is firing well. So, this is this is how it, it goes. Now, even if you know, even if you get a huge data out of MRI and all this stuff of EEG, how do you decide at the end of it that whether this is a conscious process, whether this is an unconscious process, how do you decide the data which you get correlates with the exact behavior. These are some of the pressing problems of studying brain. So, let me let us do some exercise before we really move on to. So, we have taken some, we have taken the micro model, we are with micro level of brain where we are talking about neurons. We have taken a look at the behavior which is not a concern of this course, but it obviously comes in because it is all about behavior the gross structure of brain, we know briefly about the tools which we know, we have we know the dilemmas whether we want the space, whether we want the time, whether we want to see the functionality or the structure, what exactly do we want and the whole complexity of conscious and unconscious which we will discuss later on, the attention span of the brain. Let us start, let us do a small exercise for the rest of the few minutes for this lecture write a small advertisement about yourself. You can take a minute, write it and then automatically you can see it later. Why I am asking you, if you write a, I asked you a question I think in the previous lecture that have you, have you tried this? One was that information transmission, how do thoughts travel faster than this thing, but try something else. You are seeing a face of your friend or you seeing a friend or somebody, somebody standing in front of you fully. If you close your eyes and half a minute you imagine, you can still imagine that person in full length, but have you ever tried to close your eyes? and imagine your full body at that instance, not any of your pictures and not any of your camera images, just close your eyes, sit and try to imagine the way in whatever posture, whatever clothes, whatever expression you are, it will be very difficult, try it. Why is it that the brain can see external things? in their full imagery, but it cannot create your image. Although, 
it is receiving sound. So, so the trick is like the sound is going in, sound, vision, touch, pain, position, pressure on my feet, everything. One part of the brain, I told you about that 40 hertz gamma oscillation. It unites all these things to give you what you call self. Okay. Now, if I ask you to write advertisement about yourself, you will write good things. I am competent, hard working, honest or some people may write not honest or ambitious, caring, whatever. I am a good psychiatrist, I am a good engineer, whatever. Now, what does it all this mean? What is all this? This all are what you call concepts. The con your brain has already formed a concept about yourself, but if you ask your brain to close your eyes and see yourself in your full glory, it will create a caricature of yourself. You close your eyes either you will see half of your face or you will see body, it is very difficult to get a immediate full standing posture or sitting posture exactly like you are in this instance. But if you open your eyes and you ask see the other person, close your eyes and ask your mind to imagine the full person it will immediately do. Why is it so? Give, give it a thought, probably again it comes to the same thing because your own image, although it is giving you a concept of self, maybe it does not actually require your imagery to survive. Whereas, when you are seeing external world, that imagery is useful for deciding the threat value. Your own body is not your threat value and that is why it is the reason that like Ramachandran writes that some people who do not have limbs often feel it. Now, your brain area is firing it. Some people say that they hear voices, like when you have, there is something called hypnogogic and hypnopompic hallucination. When you are very, very emotional, you may actually hear voices of the people whom you love or when you are going, you will suddenly feel somebody is calling you. These are all normal phenomena. So, brain is like all the time it is active, it is taking all information, it is, it has your own image, it has your own concepts about yourself. It takes all that images, forms first a security in it, so that you are safe, you are standing well, you are not falling down, creates that physicality of the process, so that you first you are physically existing in the brain. And that also includes if you are feeling thirsty, if you are feeling hungry, your brain keep telling you drink water. It is sending all those need based. So, physicality is also complemented by need at that time. Once these things are done, they are always, then you go on to higher level about image for yourself and these concepts help you in. So, what I was telling you is about gestalt. Can you see this? What, what do you see? You see a tree, but there is something else here. Yes, what is this? And there is a chimpanzee. Only information is a tree, but your brain has used that empty space also to create another imagery and these are familiar things, these are familiar things. Like this, you see a vase or you see a face, this is a Necker's cube, you observe it closely, you will see the whole red and white will change, observe it for some time. You can see it, you always get images on the internet. So, we come to the basic question with the whole title of this talk, but this four, four and a half hours of prelude was necessary, because otherwise you would have been guessing like lot of, there is nothing wrong being philosophical and spiritual and, but then the purpose is different. So, does the brain create the mind? There is a lot of philosophical debate which went on. Descartes who said the brain and mind are separate dichotomy, dualistic thing. So, the, 
when once it happened people became very happy because then people could really jump on to the physical research of the brain and they said forget mind we not bothered about mind let's research on this there were people who said that there is nothing in the brain brain is just an antenna so your brain will only know what it perceives what it perceives immanuel kant was more sensible who said probably is the readiness of the brain and it deals so brain creates mind is problem one or it's an antenna i think now this is again a, you can answer this question in a superficial way that okay brain is not an antenna it creates mind or the some people will say it's an antenna whatever comes through obviously networks grow under the influence of experiences but networks also grow with genetic influence so what we understand there are four five mod, four models of brain one is a quantum model coming from quantum physics the chaos non linear there is one model which is a bayesian probability and what we will talk about in detail i'll not teach you quantum physics but as it applies to the brain i'll keep keep mentioning so what what are we looking at are we looking at region and networks or are we looking at behavior or function are we looking at the population of neuron or are we looking at a spatial or temporal resolution with all this this is one layer when investigating clinically we have to look for treatment translational is activity in this region related to some feature of disorder or disease the biggest question which everybody will ask how does the brain accomplish some functions okay so i'll end at this in this lecture and maybe we'll we'll see how it, how it goes just to end with this side you can see this this is the hierarchical dynamics of human life you compare societies individual neighborhood city nation here you have neurons mini columns module macro columns neocortex time scales millisecond to how many years we live in years huh so this is millisecond and we go on to live live our life goes on in years so we don't know whether the quantum field so there is a biochemistry so let's stop at this with this slide and then we'll continue because now things will get interesting thank you